presence on Google, drive more traffic to your website. And when I say drive more traffic, I'm not just talking about giant numbers of people who will call you on the phone and waste your time. I'm trying to get you qualified leads so they're kind of self-qualified, right? Okay. This is what people think about when they see Google. They have a lady whose job it is to keep it uncluttered. I don't, I don't know how you get this gig, but her job is to make sure there's nothing else on the front of the website. Those of you who follow Google have probably noticed in the past that there were things there that aren't there now. It used to say advanced search on there. Anybody notice advanced search before? Raise your hand if you ever saw advanced search. Where's it at? It's gone. It's still there. It's just not on the front of the website. You have to use Google to find advanced search. I can't find it without Googling it. Advanced search is way cool, though. This is just a little mind map of some of the stuff that Google does. I don't know if you can read that. That's why I told you if you're in the back, you might want to move to the front. Let me go through and read a few of these. Some of these you've probably heard of. Google Dashboard. Google Doodle. You know what that is? You see it every time you go on Google. It's those little pictures that show up. So if you go there and you, uh, one of these probably says Google Gravity. There's one where you do the doodle and it, it just falls down. I love the Google doodles. Uh, finance, Easter egg stuff that's hidden in there. Google Fiber, they were wiring up some different cities. I'm not going to go through and read all those. I'll waste a lot of time. I'm going to focus on the, the ones that I have the light bulbs on. Google Goggles, Places, Panorama, and YouTube, and maybe background a little bit. Okay. I do a, a four-hour course at state level. I'm not trying to cram four hours into one hour. That just makes for a really bad experience. What I would rather do is spend a little time on a few things so you get it. Google changed their privacy policy back in March. Did anybody notice that? I mean, you, did you get the email? Did you read it? Did you notice your search changed the next day <coughs> or right around then? I woke up. And I went to my wife and I said, I don't know what they did different on Google, and I don't know what's going on, but something has completely changed. You know, at the time, uh, if, I, if I went out there and searched, I may have come up like, if I did Auctioneer St. Louis, let me do it without the period. That's one thing you need to know is how people search. If you have a, a town that has a saint in it, you probably want to do it with the period and without the period, because some people search without it. If you do Google keywords, you'll find out which way they do it most. But like right now, we have our Google Places thing there up at the top. I think that's Google Places. And down here we have some pictures that showed up. And over here we've got uh, how to pick an auctioneer. And I think down at the bottom we have something. And we kind of started pushing people off the front page. Now, I, I understand that Google knows that you're you, and if you go search, Google realizes what you like, and if you search on you enough, you're going to get a whole lot of you. I get it. But the day before, I had like two lines, and the next day I had six. Something had changed. That's what I want you to figure out. What happened was, in this thing they said, we got rid of over 60 privacy policies across Google and replaced them with one that's a lot shorter and easier to read. What's that mean to you? Because it does mean something to you. It's tailored for you. We'll better understand which version of pink or jaguar you're talking about. What the heck do they mean there? You go out and you search on the word bass. And I keep thinking this microphone is not on. It's just, okay. You keep, you, you uh, search on the word B-A-S-S. -S, and then you do B-A-S-S -S, and you do B-A-S-S. -S. You're going to get three different results. If, uh, you had written an email recently on Google that said you were going to go fishing and maybe you said something about a band you were in on YouTube and then possibly you went out and searched on some kind of a bar you're going to get something completely different than each other. One of you is going to get something about a bass guitar one of you is going to get something about a fish and one of you is going to get something out about an adult beverage that's a, a bass beer. But how does Google know? They change their privacy policy, it's how they know. They watch everything you do. If you talk about something in your email, they know about it. Trust me on this. Go out and search on something, and then go back over into Facebook and look, and search on something bizarre, like some type of a microphone for an auctioneer. Then go over there on Facebook and watch, all of a sudden microphones will start showing up. They know what you're doing. 
They're watching you. In fact, not only do they know what you're doing, they know what you did and what you're going to do. They have a pretty good algorithm for figuring out what your next move might be. And that's kind of some of the things at the end of this that I might talk about. Let's talk about background first. Google Goggles, YouTube, Google Places. Um, it, they changed the name to Google Local, but it's the same thing. And Panorama. Don't worry about me talking fast and getting through this too fast. Uh, I, I, if I go too quick, slow me down. If I don't give you enough, uh, smack me and I'll give you more. Google Backrub. Google started off, that was the original name. In fact, if you go back to that, that's what Google was called. That's one of the founders' hands off the internet. When they were so poor, they took pictures of their hands and put the word back rub on. But think about what it means. You rub my back, I'll rub yours. By the way, if you ever want to really rub my back, put a link to my website from yours. You'll help me out a whole lot because Google likes that. Think about books. When you uh, go out and you read a book, how do you know that this book's authoritative? If it's on a subject like biology and somebody else cites it in their book, it must be alright. But if 500 authoritative books cite this one book in the back of the book when you're reading it, that must be a pretty good book. Another example from, from nowadays. If you go out and you read all these blogs about search engine optimization and they all talk about the same places, seomaz.com, maybe that's a good place to go learn about SEO on your own. Okay, search engine optimization, or uh, Mashable.com. They all wind up talking about Mashable. Hey, just go to Mashable and read it yourself. You know, read the other guys. That's good, but go get some some stuff. There was a guy at Stan Stanford University, Larry Page, and another guy named Bren, that got advice from their faculty advisor to write a paper that was called "The Anatomy of a Large Scale Hypertextual Web Search Engine." That's the paper that Google is based on. If you go search on that right now, or you search on Backrub, you'll find this paper. You can read it. This is actually the algorithm that... Algorithm is a little mathematical formula. This is the algorithm that they started off with right here. It's literally right there. This is the page rank formula. And by the way, that's named after Larry Page, not the rank of your page. It's backwards of what you think. And all this gobbledygook here, what that boils down to is they're looking at the links and they're looking to see if they're good links to your website. They change a whole lot of other stuff in there. Um, but really what that boils down to is who's citing your website, how important do they think they are. There's a lot of other stuff too, I'm not trying to make it too trivial, but if you go through that formula right there, that's exactly what that formula boils down to when you read what the D's and the PR's and all stand for. Go out and take a look at it, see if I'm lying to you. So good, Rob, great. Quality links. How am I going to get a quality link? Um, I don't know if it's in this slide, but write down this, this website, dmoz.org. I used to teach that Demise was the first place that Google went out to when it figured out how to crawl the web. I've seen videos since then where some of the architects, that's what they call the chief programmers at Google, have discounted that fact. Look at it this way. Google ranks pages from 0 to 10. There's 8 page rank 10 sites in the entire world. And it goes straight up like this. A 1 is 10 times better than a 0. A 2 is 10 times better. You get what I'm saying than a 1. Page rank 10s, there's 8 of them. And Demaz, directory of Mozilla, is a 9. If you can get yourself on there, you can get yourself a lot of love out of Google. Okay, There's a lot of big successful auction houses that have never bothered to even try and get on demise. That's a whole subject in itself. I don't really have a lot of time to talk about in this class today. But let's just suffice to say, don't just jump in. Go out there and look. Search on the word auction on demise. Look at the results. There'll be something that says more. Click on the more. And look at all the different categories and think very strongly about what category you want to go in. John, if you go in and put yourself under storage lockers and you're not doing storage locker options in five years, it's almost impossible to get them to change it. So you want to maybe say auctions or auction business and not necessarily storage lockers. If you just do benefits now but you might wind up doing real estate later, don't just put yourself in under benefit. And then what you do is go look at someone who's already in there and then R&D, rip off and duplicate. Take whatever it is that they've got there, take that text, 
change it slightly, and if they're, you know, auctioneers serving eastern Kentucky and parts of whatever, uh, and mostly in this area, auctioneers serving eastern Missouri, and most, you know, that's all I did, and it worked once before, couldn't hurt changing it enough so it doesn't look stupid. Then I'll go, hey, wait a minute. All right, so these quality links are from relative sites. You can go get a link from someplace and hurt your website. You do not want to go to a link farm. You do not want to, these guys call you on the phone, I can get you on the front page. Yeah, for you know, platypus tonsil floss, I can get anybody on the front page for platypus tonsil floss. You know, well, what difference does it make? You want to be on the front page for what you want to be on the front page for. Okay, so I joined the NAA because the NAA is a Google page rank five. You might say, Rob, how do I know? Go on Google Chrome and download the page rank tool. It will show you the page rank of a site. It's right here where this little question mark is. If I had one of those fancy pointers like other people do, right up there, see where I'm pointing? That's the page rank of a site. So if I go to my site, it will automatically show you my page. Thank you. Is that from Windows or is that a is that a Mac one? Yeah, that's an Apple. Oh, an Apple, an Apple point. Thank you, I appreciate it. It works. Oh wait a minute, I do have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Um, Tracy Dowers. Absent-minded. Here, I got something for you. All right. So, internet slow here. I'm not going to waste the time so you can see it, but it'll show you the page rank. If you want to check out your competitors or look at your site, go get the page rank tool. The NAA's website is a page rank five, um, and what you have to understand is having a link from a six, let's say, is equal to about 140 links from a three. It's way better to go find some quality links. Where do you get quality links? Well, you can go out and look uh, with the page rank tool, or you can go to a site called Alexia, A-L-E-X-A dot -E com. Alexia ranks, did I spell it right? Anybody know? Same I'm a horrible point. speller. Google it, they'll tell you if it's right. Alexia rates page ranks and uh, sites, and it'll tell you how many sites link in. Um, and, and it's a great place to go look at sites and see how, how high quality they are. I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot on the internet because the internet's real slow here. But I, I actually joined the NAA to get a link to my website. Um, now, it's not the normal way people come into this, this organization. Um, so, NAA, State Association to StateSales.net, Auction Zip, Global Auction Guide, um, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter. Press releases are very popular and very powerful. If you have a decent auction and, and you can think of some way to spin it, send out the press release because what happens is that press release might wind up on a highly rated, highly trusted site like a news site. Okay, and sometimes they just stay there forever. So go ahead and send those out if you're doing something that the press might just cut. Maybe it's a slow news day. I didn't cover that a whole lot, uh, and I want to save a little bit of time toward the end for questions. I want to show you some stuff you haven't seen. This is Google Goggles. Has anybody here used Google Goggles? All right, I want to show you what you can do with it that maybe you don't know. As far as I'm concerned, it's kind of stupid. You know, when I use it, most of the time it doesn't work. I'll take a picture of a Coke bottle. It'll show me naked women because it says that they're kind of shaped like the Coke bottle, I guess. I don't know. When I was in uh, GPPA, I swear to God, I took a picture of a, a Tiffany salt cellar and Google Goggles thought it was a hamburger. It was either a Tiffany salt cellar or it was a hamburger. I'm not sure which one. But here's the thing. It does have some use as kind of a tricky way to get a link back to yourself from Google. And let me show you how you do that. What it's supposed to do is you identify something with it, and, and you're supposed to be training Google what it is. This is actually a picture that's in a friend of mine's house. I was looking at it one day, saying, I just love that, that little poster. It makes me feel like it ought to be on the Amalfi Coast in Italy in the Tinquachera region. I actually had seen enough travels that I, I actually kind of thought I knew where it was. And uh, lo and behold, I took my, my Google phone, my uh, Google goggles, I took a picture of it, and it figured out that uh, it was, glasses time, Amalfi Cappuccini. So they're on the Amalfi Coast, and if you look back in here, 
far enough, you'll see there's a couple of monks that they call cappuccini there. All right, who cares? Um, the point here is, I found this image. So I thought, well, heck, I'll save it for this class. And so I stored the picture, and it gave me this URL. When I pulled that URL up, it gave me a place to type a note. So I typed in here, here, here is an example of another way to associate your site with a picture, www.mountcityauctions.com. I'm sending this as a note to my family of St. Louis auctioneers about an item at our auction. I have a link to myself from Google in a sneaky way that most people won't think of. That's kind of what I'm trying to show you, a little different weird tricks here that you probably wouldn't think of. It's not terribly useful. You're not really going to, I mean, what you're going to find is if you go out and start messing with Google Goggles is that it's not useful enough to really use that much. But if you're using it to put links to your website, what do you care? Your competition isn't going to think of it, I, I almost guarantee you. So, and as part of that new privacy policy, um, remember it said that they're going to look at interest that you've expressed in Google+, Gmail, and YouTube. And Google bought YouTube for $1.65 billion. Don't you think they're interested in what you put on YouTube? Shake your head, yes. Okay. Um, I want to point something out here. Google Plus, while we're just on that slide. Who in here uses Google Plus? Y'all use the heck out of Facebook, don't you? Yeah. LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. But you don't give Google Plus any love at all, do you? Not yet. I admit it. Come on. None of you do. All right. Um, what was I going to show you here? Oh, the PageRank tool. You can see here now that it's a Google 3. It, that's not too shabby. Most state associations are a 3. Occasionally there are 4. Muster Brothers, you're a 4. Uh, Rao, you guys are a 3. But if I can get pretty close to Rao and Muster's out of the little ranch house in St. Louis, Missouri, I don't feel like I'm doing too bad. I don't have a big staff. It's just me working on the plane around. Um, let me show you Google Plus while we're here, though, bless you. I'll come back to it if it takes forever. When you go to Google, and, and you can, of course, search on Google Plus if you want. I'll come back to that. I'll let it bake for a minute, and we'll talk about YouTube, and then we'll come back to that. Google Plus, though, is kind of cool. It's another way to search Google that you're not used to. Normally, you go out on Google, you search, your stuff comes up, and it just sits there. If you go to Google Plus and you do it, it starts feeding like Twitter. It's kind of weird, but you know, like I was getting ready to do an auction on Alzheimer's for the uh, the Alzheimer. I forget, no, I'm just kidding. Bad joke. I was doing an Alzheimer's <laughs> Association auction. Then I'm done. I'll be here all week. Thank you. And I got out there and I searched on Alzheimer's and it started scrolling. And this is cool. And I learned that they were getting ready to do. Uh, they got a four million dollar grant, and it was going to be spent a lot of it in the St. Louis area, the largest. Um, grant that had ever been given out. And it was nice because then when I went to the Alzheimer's Association to do my auction, I could tell them about stuff and I thought, oh, this guy's smart. But, you know, I just searched. It was really easy. So, YouTube. What I really love about YouTube is it's thick. And here's what I mean by that. <clears throat> when you go out there and you get results on a Google search, they usually only take up a teeny bit of room, right? <coughs> But a YouTube result is a big old walking video. Yeah, if you got something that's, that's speedy and fast, because I'm trying to go off my Android phone, and apparently, <laughs> hook me up, brother. So, here's what I mean about thick while Scott does his thing. If you think about a regular Google search, you get a little line of text, right? Pay attention to me, pay no attention to him. A little line of text. <laughs> But if you, if you do a, a video, they're big. You can push somebody right off the front page with a video. And here's the really cool thing about doing YouTube. You can get into YouTube and you can adjust it real time. You can get in there and see who's kicking your butt, who's right above you. Look at their keywords. Click in. Look at their, their description. Look at their keywords. Look at their title. And say, well, what are they doing better than me? And then just do it. And then refresh your screen. And guess what? After your video's been there a little while, it'll start going boop. And it'll just go up and go, hey, I beat that guy. 
Well, look, that guy's beat me. And you just do it again, and you go, boop. And I have sat there. We were sitting on vacation. They'll tell you, I never stop. We're out on vacation. But to me, and I'm sure you guys are pretty much the same way. Hey, girls. Um, when I, I, I just love this job. I love what we're doing. And so when I get time off, I just work on what I want to work on. I'm still working. But I'll get out my computer, and I'll sit there with a glass of wine looking out at the, the lake. And, uh, is that good? Am I, am I, am I hot? And I would sit there and adjust some stuff, and the next thing you know, I'm rising to the top, boop, 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 of this YouTube. But then you go out to Google, and when you do it, if you have an internet connection, um, you can go ahead and search on it, and we'll see what happens here. We'll give it a try. If you go back and search on it, then all of a sudden you start seeing it show up on Google. Now pay attention, I just said something really important. You're on YouTube and you're watching it rise up. Boop, 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 boop. Let me give you an example. We sell comic books. Everybody here probably knows them. So does Heritage. They're huge. So does Comic Link. Any of you guys with working Apple products, go ahead and search right now. Just search on Vintage Comic Book Auctioneer. We're on the front page. That's worldwide. Heritage is on there once. I'm on there like two or three times. And some of my results are these videos. That's pretty cool. Okay, and, and thank you, Scott. And so, it's nice to have a tech guy in the crowd. So if you go, um, My, 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 that is speedy. Thank you, sir. So if you go here, that's Heritage. They're paying for that one. The ones that you see, the, the highlighting around there, that's that's paid. If you go down a little bit, uh, GP analysis, there's Mount City. That's us right there. So we're on there one time. I go down a little bit more. That's me. That one's me. So that one's me. What is that? Three, four times on the front page worldwide. Not too shabby. you know. So, But you can do the same thing. You have to be able to figure out what you want to do, though, to get there. Um, let's talk about YouTube for just a second. I, I would rather show you stuff than go through a deck of slides and show you how to do it. I think it's way more important than just going through and um, showing you a bunch of PowerPoints. You got the PowerPoints already? They're, they're on your um, little auction zip thumb drive they gave you. Let me show you what I would do if I were you. you. Go to YouTube and you upload a video. Everybody has a YouTube account, right? If not, go get one. If you have a Google account, you have a YouTube account. I have a couple. And this one happens to be called Dumby Elvis. And so if you get in here, yeah, how is that for keywords? And I know, it's stupid, I just picked it. You upload your video right here, this upload button. So you get in here and let's say you went to Spokane at a pretty cool convention and you want people to find it and you want people to know you're associated with the NAA. Once you upload this video, you get in here and you look down below and you name it whatever it is you want people to find you for. In this case, I was hoping for NAA in Spokane. But let's say that you wanted to actually get found for, help me out here, Storage Lockers, California. What's that? Okay. What am I doing? Type in free keywords. That's what you really want. You want to know what words to use to get people to find you. You're not going to remember everything I tell you, or I'd rather tell you one easy thing to remember. Free keywords. Everybody loves free. Anybody here not love free? Whoever loves free, raise your hand. Who likes keywords, who wants to be found? Free keywords. There. So, you'll remember that. I used to be a high school teacher. I have to keep it simple. So you go right here, and you see this Google AdWords tool. That's a great one. You probably already know that one. There's another one down here called Keyword Spy. If you go down here far enough, you'll find Keyword Spy. Keyword Spy is great. I can go to your website. I can put your website in. I can find out what keywords you're using, how much you're paying per click. 
I can find out what your ads look like. It'll probably tell me the size of your shoes. It's an amazing little website. Uh, this one here is nifty though. Everybody's probably used it, but let me show you a few ways to use it. And maybe you do use it this way, maybe you don't. But what we had, we said California auction. I can't spell my way out of a wet paper bag. I'm a horrible speller. Oh, it doesn't like my capitalization. I'm not good at that either. Auction storage. And so if we were going to search on that, you've got to go down here and, and fill in this stupid thing that's impossible to read. <laughs> E-S, help me out, N-E-G-A-H-Y-E-L-A-P. What's that? They're doing what? It, people have told me that before. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say I believe that. Um, you, then you go ahead and you sign this up. You uh, put it in order by how many searches they've done. Local here means USA. It doesn't mean your area. The other one's global. This will show you how long or how many of those words have been used. But if you scroll down, you're going to find other words that they're suggesting. Like you said, storage and auction. And maybe you didn't think of uh, auctions or you didn't think of some other word. Let me give you an example. Coin and coins. If you go on here and you search on coin and coins, one of them is searched on twice as much. It's coin. But if you didn't have coin, you want to go ahead and put coin in there because it's twice as likely to bring you the right bidders to your website as the other word. If you look at fundraiser versus gala, if you look at fundraiser spelled as one word versus two, this is where you can go to and figure out which keywords you want to have on your website. You can also go look at a website here if you went back up and you look, and you can put what I call doing a little two step. Go out and search on world record decoy price if you're selling a decoy duck. I and mean, we always get stuff that's different. I never know what I'm going to have from week to week. You know, how do we know what to do with these doggone comic books? I didn't know my butt from a hole in the ground with comic books. I just had some. My son knew something about them. I knew some of them were valuable. Well, how did I know they were valuable? I was reverse engineering everybody's websites out there that I could find to figure out who was beating me and why. How was I doing that? I was doing searches to see who would come up first. I started off with things like St. Louis Auctioneer. I found out who was beating me. I figured out how he was doing it by this website called Auction Zip. I never heard of it. I went out and got a link from Auction Zip. And I found out a few other things he was doing. Then I did a couple other things and I beat him and I went on to the next guy. At the top of this food chain, there was this place called Heritage Auctions. <clears throat> the number one auction that came up, if you just at that time searched on auction without any limiting condition, such as St. Louis, like a geographically limited condition, or something like comic books where you're limiting it by a type of thing, the number one place that came up was here at the junction. It doesn't work like that any, anymore because Google interprets everything locally. But I started looking at heritage sites and said, why is this site so you know, loved by Google? What is it that they've done? And I noticed that they put out a gazillion press releases, all with links to their website. Other people take those press releases and put them out too. You can take and put out little press releases on Tumblr, and you can put them out on, uh, help me out, what's the other one, Twitter. And people will repeat those. You can put them on Facebook, people repost them, and pretty soon you're getting much love. But whatever it is that you're doing, the thing that you're doing, and you have to sell some collectible thing or whatever, go out and search for world record prices for that. Find out who sold it for the most. So let's say if you have crockery, it's crockery farms. If you have guns, it's Julia. If you have um, furniture, maybe it's Leland Little. Find out Guyan and Schmidt are the people for ducks. Go look at their website. Use that keyword spy tool to go out there and look at their website, find their keywords, and see, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that one. Look at that one. That's a good one. So now, let's put it together. You're going back to YouTube with that. And I showed you that on YouTube, you have to put in keywords. The way you rise to the top on YouTube is by doing your keyword research, finding out what the best guys are using, and sticking it on your YouTube video for whatever it is you're trying to promote. YouTube is free. This is how we got a guy to come down from Nebraska to bid on a music box in St. Louis. He saw it on YouTube. It didn't cost me anything. But if you're just putting stuff on YouTube and you're not optimizing these keywords, you're not doing yourself any favor. The first thing you need to put is a link to your website. In the description, put a HTTP colon link to your website. You can't put it in YouTube proper, but you can put it in the description. And now you have another clickable link on Google to 
to your website. And that was the point of all that blather. All right, Google AdWords. You're probably using AdWords. Some of you, maybe you understand it, maybe you don't. Uh, you can type in just like I showed you there and find these so you can get those new keywords. Not going to harp on that one too much, but it does suggest the new ones. We just talked about that. Then you can take those and uh, look at websites like we just talked about. Goes back to the